Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with the next episode of my Let's Make a Retro Game. Um, and in this particular episode, we're getting on to player collisions and lives. So last time we uh, finished off uh, shooting the enemy objects and having the enemy objects so adding to your score. Um, and the enemy objects reaching the bottom past the player and subtracting from the score. So that got off a couple of um, different ways of doing mess, uh, plus updating the score on the screen correctly, removing objects uh, when they were killed, no fancy explosions or anything like that, we'll get into that later. Um, so, But this time uh, we want to see uh, or add code for when the player gets hit by a meteor and to display and keep uh, and update the number of lives that the player has. Right, so um, well first we need to see whether a enemy has reached the bottom of the screen. So um, in our, sorry, I'm referring to my notes over here, uh, our move enemies routine, which is up here, so around line 340. I'm working from the Coleco code uh, this time, but the MSX code is almost identical, just the line numbers will be slightly different. Um, and updated versions of both will be available for download. Uh, from this episode's section on my website. Um, so we need to find that section of code. Here it is, fixed increase for now. Enemy has reached the bottom of the screen. Right, so what we're going to do, it's going to grab this bit of code. This. It's okay, so it goes straight into decreasing the score there. And now let's just go through it. So, okay, enemy has reached the bottom of the screen. Check whether the enemy has hit the player's ship. So, what we do, we get um, the X coordinate of the player ship. And we don't need to use our normal collision detection routine because we already know the asteroid or enemy object is where the player ship is. Um, and just like our collision detection uh, we went over a couple of things ago, these steps are fairly similar. So we subtract the width of the enemy and we compare it against this is our enemy object's X coordinate um, and no carry means that this number is smaller than uh, this x coordinate minus 14. So, in other words, the, the enemy object is definitely to the left of the player and has missed it. So, we jump to this label here, ME7, which have a look in a minute, which jumps out. We didn't hit. Now, we want to add the width of the um, of the object the other side. Now, since it's we took 14 off, we need to add 14 on that another 14, so that's 28. And then we compare it with the X coordinate again. And this time, if there is a carry, we're missing, which means we're, we're to the right of the player. So now when we reach here, we should be hitting the player. So the first thing we need to do is decrease the player's life counter, so lives, depreciate it. Um, just checking we don't overflow. Um, I'll explain that because we might uh, we're going to check and display the lives and whether it's game over in a separate spot. So here you could come through here and several objects could hit the player at once and we don't want it going less than zero. So this is just a little check here that we haven't overflowed and um, gone below zero, no one's negative, then in that case we just make it zero and then we store the result in the lives counter. And at the moment we're not doing any animation effect, so we'll put a to zoo in here, animate the player's death. And then we need to continue, so we loop around our other enemies. Right, and here's the ME7, so we didn't, uh, this is where we jump to if we didn't hit the player. We just go back to our normal code to decrease the player's score, because they've missed an object and it's reached the bottom. So that wasn't too bad, so that's our first thing. Now we need to do a bit of work to display our lives. So let's go to the end of the file, and these are our 
uh, where we've declared our RAM um, and this is where our lives are stored sorry just doing my notes to the next thing now we need to add a new one a new variable called last lives Oops. data space once so we're reserving one byte of RAM for that variable uh, now very important is you declare some more memory we need to make sure we set it to a known state so we need to find our init RAM function which is around here we go init RAM function um, and we want it to set it to zero so you find where you know another spot where you're using where you've got something set to zero already and we'll add it in here Oops. excuse my bad typing right so we set that to zero now very important we need to display our lives now there is a display lives function in here um, but that's code I've copied across from another one we're going to replace that completely and there is a fair bit of um, fair bit of code in this section so just a second to copy and paste oops missed there it is now there's a bit of code in the section so I'll step through it close um, slowly with you okay so I'm going to replace this section of code complete and notice it's it's not that long at the moment whereas the new one is quite a bit longer Okay, now let's work our way through this. Right, now, um, so instead of displaying our lives as a number, we're actually going to display a bitmap of the player's ship, one for each life, which, is, which adds a little bit more uh, graphics uh, pizzazz to our game. We've got plenty of room down on the bottom bar to do this. Um, so in our display routine, the first thing we do is we we grab uh, what is it's this sets HL to the address that our lives are stored in. Then we go and grab the value out of last lives, and we compare it with whatever HL is pointing to, which is lives. Right? If they match, we don't want to redraw the lives again. Um, so this makes sure that we're not. Uh, wasting time drawing to the screen and we don't have to. If the lives haven't changed we don't need to redraw the live counter. The first thing we need to do is clear the current lives display so just, just blank it out with nothing. So it's located at six, uh, position 688 in our name table um, which is like the second line up and on the right hand side um, actually it's not the second line up, it's about the fourth line up um, and the, our characters are two characters high so we need to clean out two rows so all we do is we set the address the starting VRAM thing to be 688 we want to wipe out 14 um, tiles because the maximum of seven lives each two tiles wide is 14 and we want to write zero in there which is a blank space and call our fill RAM function so that repeats the same value 14 times starting from that position in video RAM and then we repeat that again for the next row right now we want to show the current lives um, so this is our starting character and our character set this is our starting position of the top row we set our pointer like our, our video RAM pointer to there we get our current number of lives we use this AND function to make it a maximum of seven so that only those bits will be preserved so if, the num if the, you've got more than seven lives it'll only show seven but it means you can still have more than seven lives um, and we put that value of A and B which is going to be our loop counter here um, we put that value D there into A and we output it to um, our video port increment one position because we want the, the two characters right next to each other 
So it put 44 in here, and then it would put uh, 45 in here. So there are two characters, and then it would decrement jump when non-zero around to here. So it will go in this loop as many times as there are lives. So we'll put output two characters for each life thing. So that's hopefully that makes sense. Now we need to do the bottom line of characters. So those ones start at character number 42, and at that position, same matching up there where we rubbed out before. We set our video right, grab the number of lives, and it off again so it's not too big. Put that into our B for our counter, and we do exactly the same thing except this one will write 42 and 43, 42, 43 for each one of the lives and go around that loop. Right, then we grab our current life value again and store it in last life. So now they're now the same, so if you called this again, it would exit straight away and not write to the screen. All right, so next we need to call this routine. So this is called in our V blank, or well, you know, vertical blank routine for this the thing and we've got a video rights which is, a, which is called by our interrupt at the moment we're displaying the score if it's changed so we need to add a call to display lives there we go and now that um, live print routine is going to be called every time we get a vertical blank which is when the all the screens being drawn and the cursor is currently returning to the top and that's our time to write to the screen without getting corruption so this will only display the lives if the lives have changed because we've written our routine well as a loud car goes past. Okay, now one more little touch. Of course, if we run out of lives, we want to um, have, um, you, you know, it go to game over. Um, now what I'll do is I'll grab our bit of code first. Bit. So we're going back to our main Yeah, there we go. So we go back up to our main loop here. So go to the top of the file, it's probably the quickest way, and then go down. You get your title screen, you get your new game, we get our main screen. A little bit further down, that's all our setup, and then we get to our main loop. You could of course jump to it by going quick there. So once per tick we're going and doing all these things. Um, uh, another reason for doing this as well, we're, we were currently inside a, fun, uh, a subroutine going through a loop and it's not easy to jump out of that unless we jump to the end of the loop. So we might as well finish going through and animating all the objects. And then in our main loop we add a test to see whether we've run out of lives. Add that in there. So, test to see if we've run out of lives. To do, display a game over message and wait, and then go to new game. So at the moment, all we're going to do is if our current lives, compare that to zero, if that's zero, we jump back to our title screen. Very, very simple. Now we have one other little fix. Um, as I said, I am building this as I go. We need to, um, the only trouble is if we jump straight back to our title screen here, our title screen, so let's go to bit where it was, so, so title screen here, just drew, loaded the character set and, and drew on the screen, but if we're in the middle of a game, or, you know, there would be sprites displayed on the screen, and they're not going to be erased if we jump straight back here. So straight after this clear pattern table, all we're going to do is add clean up in case the game left anything on screen call clear sprites this is where having a nice lot of functions really help and sprite write will write our sprites to the screen so that's actually the end of our coding so um, you know, a little bit of code, uh, but hopefully I've explained it properly. So let's save that and make sure we haven't made any mistakes by building it. 
Label ME8 not found. I have made a mistake. Look out. Line 414. So there we go. Live making mistakes. Jump MR8. Right, I forgot about that. I have to check. up here just so I can show you where it is there's our collision detection thing here there's our jump to ME8 so ME7 is our decrease in score and where we want to go in is just after this bit here so we want ME8 to be there so we just want to jump over this score decrease thing here because we still want to remove the enemy from the screen after he's hit our player clear the sprite and then continue our loop. So as I said, later on we would add explosions and things like that. So let's um, save that. Build. Goodness me. I get my notes very well, have I? So 347. Let's show you what happens if you use... Unfortunately if you use... Fifty-seven. I've gone to the wrong line. That's a worry. Okay, so if you have this problem, all you do is change a jump relative to a jump. In that case, uh, four sixty-five. Uh, this one's a bit more difficult because we actually have a um, uh, decrement and jump. Apologise. I obviously didn't. Yeah, it is in my code, but I didn't fix it. Now, see so what this does is it decrements B for you and then jumps if non-zero. So all we have to do is replace that with code that does that. So decrement B and then jump rather than jump relative non-zero. Let's try again. That's better. Okay. Sorry, missed a couple of things in the notes. I'll update the document as well later. All right, so now we have our finished code. It's compiled, so let's jump over to our um, emulator. Let's make sure we're looking at the right file. Uh, so there we go. Right, now let's see how our game goes now. Here we go, we've got three lives displayed. You can shoot things. It's a bit of a good score. And when things hit the bottom, we our score decreases. Whoops! Oh, I hit one, and it um, and my I lost two lives then. Uh, obviously, we have no concept of gaining lives at the moment. We obviously need sound effects. We're going to, have to add some animations. And obviously at the randomness of our enemies, we need to develop some better enemy patterns and things like that to make it a bit more exciting. Um, but as you can see, the game's progressing along nicely, and it's nice having a graphical display. Let's try that again. There we go. We ran out of lives, and we're back to the title screen. Uh, there may be a slight issue on that left-hand side. Uh, we'll have a, we can um, debug that together later. So that's all thing of developing a game along you and you find little exceptions to things that you've got to include in your logic. Alright, I hope everybody's enjoying following on the series. I definitely enjoy making these and I um, hope to have an episode out at least every month. They do require a fair bit of preparation and work but they are good fun and, and lots of people out there like them so I'll continue to do them. Alright, um, now all of the materials for this episode will be available to download from a website. I'll put a link down to the article on the website down below. Um, and you can download the source code for both MSX and Coleco. Um, I will do an updated version for the Spectre video with the next episode, just to catch that one up. 
and I'll then update the archives for each of the previous episodes so there's one for Spectre video as well. Um, not as many people following along for that system of course but it's just nice to keep everything up to date. Um, and there's the actual text that I was myself following there it will be available as a PDF to download to go along with those source files. And obviously if you have any questions uh, list them down below, happily answer them. Alright, um, and uh, look forward to the next episode. Um, so, so we've done a fair bit now, so it's probably time to start um, adding a bit more excitement to our game, maybe have some different types of enemies and actions and things like that. So we'll look at that in our next episode. I'm Electric Adventures, thanks to all my subscribers, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.